Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our ISTQB AI tester certification. We are done with all the topics of chapter 7 and it's time for us to continue with the sample questions from this chapter as well and try to understand what kind of typical questions can be asked to you right from this particular chapter and we'll get, get, get going from there to build up a confidence understanding what exactly we need to remember and what exactly we need to apply when it comes to the chapter 7 which is testing AI based systems. Well the very first question what we have for you is which of the following is a factor associated with the test data that can make the testing of AI based system difficult. I think these are very straightforward questions team whenever you have such questions all you have to do is remember the exact pointers what we had in the syllabus about these challenges and there are no tips twists and tricks involved in such things. All we need to have is a clear cut understanding what exactly does this particular item does and how exactly we are looking forward to have these uh, associated with the right answer right so let's pick up each of these options and try understanding what exactly these uh, options stand for and can we call them as right or not so we are talking about the challenges which are related or factors associated with the test data well that can make the testing of AI systems difficult number one it says a sourcing big data with high velocity uh, looks a very common thing because big data if you remember in the syllabus we had one of the common factors influencing the test data and making the testing difficult but uh, certainly uh, we cannot just make decisions right there because it's a good habit to cross check that other options are not correct before we make any decisions about a so big data of course sourcing data for AI systems which uses a large quantity of high velocity is always a difficult job because we just can't get everything what you really need. Talking about the next option sourcing data for a single source. Um, now that's not correct to a certain extent because sourcing consistent data from multiple sources can be difficult but when we talk about a single source I think that's that's pretty much simple and easy and that could not be something which makes our job complicated. Talking about option C, sourcing data separately from the data scientists. I think sourcing data separately is a good practice uh, as it prevents common failures with data scientists because they know exactly what we are looking for and separately would be a good practice altogether. So this is not a challenge what we are facing but could be a remedy for your challenges. Well, talking about the fourth that is the sourcing data from public websites looks a very trendy option team this is good this could be a very good catch talking about like public websites look very straightforward and silly option but let me tell you sourcing data from public website is straightforward and doesn't have any challenges involved in it right you can scroll through hundreds of websites or put 50 people 10 people to go through these 100 websites and collect the data and that's not at all challenging right so sometimes the options which looks little tricky uh, in terms of getting right but they are actually wrong right here we're talking about challenges getting data from public forum is very very simple and easy right so that's not something what we are looking at this point of time so at the end to conclude the right answer here is a sourcing big data with high velocity is a very very difficult job because getting a large source of data for the AI system and at the same time you're talking about high velocity which means frequently I need a lot of information. Well moving on to the next question here why would the accuracy of human decisions be considered in testing as well as the accuracy of AI based system. So we are talking about human interactions human decisions when we are talking about testing uh, you know testing all about like being a validated validating person and on the other side when you talk about the accuracy as an outcome of AI based system. So that's a very trendy thing again like you know you need to consult yourself for a moment to uh, gain insight what exactly are they talking about and then the options will drive you to get to the right answer okay here the question alone cannot help you get the right answer you need to evaluate the options as well. So let's get going the very first option here says Intuitive human decisions can made can be made faster than corresponding AI based systems in some situation. Uh, okay, that's fine. You, speed of the decision making is not related to accuracy, right? So accuracy is more about 
how close are you to the desired expectation if i'm saying that 2 cross 2 is 4 and you're telling me 3.9 i can say you're 99.9% .9 accurate but i'm not talking about the speed here that who took longer because my scenario does not talk about it my scenario talks about accuracy as a parameter which we are comparing between the ai based systems outcome and the human being or human decisions not the time being taken of course ai is faster than the human minds but the point the parameter is certainly different what we are concentrating so this is not a good relevant option for us to talk about it b unethical decisions can be made by humans as well as ai based system again pretty much the same thing the ethical choices made by humans are not related to testing ai based systems altogether so that's also not something what we can relevantly take it up as one of the comparison on the accuracy between humans and the machines looking at the next one uh, the accuracy of human decision is not relevant to testing ai based systems um, the accuracy of human decision is certainly relevant as systems may take recommended recommendations that humans approve or review at the end of the day, we need to understand that why are we making AI-based system? What are we making it for? What's the reason behind? What's the significance for it? We are trying to replace and reduce human minds and their interactions. That means we are trying to say that, hey, if you have one genius person out of one million people, then I don't have or this person doesn't have time to answer one million people about their concerns. So I'm making a system which is like replicating his mind and letting everyone go and ask this mind, which is AI based system and get their solution. That's what we are trying to do. So here we are not referring to the, you know, independency that what a human mind could think could be different from AI based. Then that's not what you are making actually, right? If your human mind says that, you know, A for Apple, then the AI based system should be taught about that, that A is equal to Apple right so if you both are distinct you are making something which is not expected at all right so that's not a concern altogether what we need to take into account well we just left with one more option but let's cross check if we misunderstood any of the previous options so option d here says human decision may be of lower quality when they have been recommended by an ai based system i think that does not read need any kind of any kind of justification of course human decisions supported by recommendations by ai based system may be of lower quality than human decisions without recommendations from a system and this should be considered in testing because it's a parameter to understand that my machines are kind of like you know at least taking care of it or humans are still better then i need that input to make my ai based system more accurate more precise and more to the point so that would help us to build what exactly do we need anyway so put together very straightforward the right answer here is d human decisions may be of lower quality when they have been recommended by an ai based system because a human mind gets slightly deviated and gets influenced by the machines well moving on to the last question for the day from this particular chapter and this is going to be a scenario based question and at the same time here you need to pick two options as you observe you have five options so do not consider this as a mistake in the examination whenever you have more than four options please cross check you need to pick up two and both should be right so quickly reading the scenario for you an ml based tall charging solution determines the type of incoming vehicle from the images captured by the camera there are different types of cameras available and the solution provider claims to be able to use cameras of different resolution. The images need to be in JPEG format uh, with a size of 320 by 480 pixels for the purpose of training the model as well as for predicting the outcome. The model should be able to classify the vehicle types with certain desired high level of accuracy because type of models could be different and should be tested against vulnerabilities. Each toll plaza will have its own complete system unconnected to any other system, right? So that they can be not driven by anything as an input additionally. Which of the following types of testing are most appropriate options for the test you would choose the system testing for, for the system testing? 
So, of course, I think uh, this would totally give you a drive on what exactly we have covered so far, the different varieties of testing which are specific to AI-based system and the common ones. And of course, uh, here we do have very straightforward options like testing for concept drift, adversarial testing, scalability testing, fairness testing, data pipeline testing. And in this case, if you straightforward talk about concept drift is tested after deployment, so this is not something what you would do um, at the system testing level because system C, each level contributes, right? They're, they're clearly referring at the end of the question that what options will you choose for system testing? And if you relate concept drift to the appropriateness, it happens in the deployment, right? So system testing is not something which is related to deployment. So A is ruled out. Talking about B, it says adversarial testing. Of course, it is important because the requirement states that the system should not be tested against vulnerabilities, right? So if you look at the scenario here, it is like saying that it should be again tested against vulnerabilities for sure, which is going to be another important thing. So adversarial, which is adverse side of it to be considered, right? So that's one point. Uh, talking about scalability, of course, scalability testing has not been mentioned as one of the requirements like performance or increasing the size of uh, handling the request. So these are independent systems connected and are not connected to any other system. So there's no load and we are not talking about how many systems should be able to interact with this system. And they clearly mention in the scenario, right? It should work independently. No other systems connected. So scalability is not my concern at all. D, fairness is using positively biased data for training. Since there is no case of positive discrimination here, fairness testing is not relevant at all. Because again, when we talk about the positive discrimination, uh, that should be considered in order to say we are talking about fairness testing. Well, the last one here, of course, is data pipeline testing, which is certainly required uh, because the images can come in various formats and resolution. So we have to filter them out. For the model to be trained, all images should have the same format. Hence, this testing is very important, which is going to talk about the data being used because the in, in the scenario, they clearly mentioned that it is you know reserved, that it should be in JPEG format and the resolution should be 320 by 480 pixels. That means there is a desired definition to what should be the data, right? Well, put together, the right answer here are B and E, B for beta and E for echo. So these are the two options which are absolutely correct, talking about adversarial and data pipeline completely driven by the given scenario, right? Well, we had just quick three questions to make you understand about what exactly this uh, chapter is going to expect from you. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.